Working hard or hardly working, boys? Hardly working. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Aussie Metal Castings. Um, I'm Bob, this is Jamie. Um, we've finished the 97 kilo anvil, which we promised, and uh, this is the finishing processes. So uh, what are we doing here? We've sent it up to be machined. So, G'day guys, what's going on? Again? Producer Jazzy behind the camera. So, Dayan, Dayan's the guy who's done the machining for us. How do you know Dayan? Oh, Dayan's a, uh, a young bloke, he's just starting out. He's got a machine shop. We're just helping him out by throwing him a little bit of work. Um, he's not too bad at it. He had a little bit of a problem with our anvil because it's pretty hard. Um, as we know, we, we, uh, we up the uh, ratios on the chrome and nipple content to make them a bit harder than everybody else's anvils. So he's got tungsten blades in that machine there, and they're uh, they're getting through it, but he's definitely having to work through pretty slowly because of the hardness of the machine. You've just got to take your time when you machine it. You can go ceramic tips on the machine a little bit easier, but these handles are hard and tough. They, they just go inside the in the cutting tool. You can see on so essentially that's that's what the corner of the blade would look like normally. Yeah. And uh, that's, all the chips and stuff. That's when bad shit happens. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're tungsten. Um, they usually last a bit longer when you're machining instead of two or three cuts. And you see it's hardly touched the surface of the, uh, the anvil. It just proves the quality of the anvil. That's about all we got, and we had to leave Day in there, and he just had to finish the rest off. We went by to pick it up uh, the next day. What's going on, buddy? There he is, he's all smiles. He's finally got through and done it. He hasn't done all of them, but he's done one. See oh, hello. Hey, look at that. She's so pretty. Doesn't matter which end comes out first. Yeah. Um, maybe if you want to come around here. There you go, I'll give yeah. you that end. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, horn first out of the machine from now on. <laughs> yes. And that's it finished. I'll, I'll finish machined anyway. There's still a few other processes we do to our handles. Um, the reason we machine the bed is to give a perfectly or, or close enough a perfect flat finish for um, for the blacksmiths. A lot of anvils aren't, aren't flat on top, but we know our, ours is. We'll also um, buff the machine marts out, and uh, that was a pretty close shave there for day, and you nearly broke a finger. <laughs> Alrighty, so Jamie, we've brought it back now. This is what we got. Time to get into your forte. We're going to blast, grind, and linish. Yeah, we're just going to do some sand blasts and just get all the big chunks of sand off, and then we'll get into the grinding. And then, um, yeah, we'll grind the bed and then the horn, and then we'll give it a linish and give it a nice polish. So you got the gantry crane here. I mean, you obviously have to be very careful about how you lift it. You're not too worried about damaging it, you have to be careful, but it's fairly solid, it's going to take quite a lot. Yeah, you just want to make sure it's stable and make sure it's on the crane wall and make sure it's not going to fall off the back of your bones or anything or land on anybody. Just make sure it's secure before you lift it too high, too high off the ground. Yeah. Now going into the blaster here, what's the purpose of sandblasting? What are you, what are you achieving? We're achieving a, uh, a better finish on the, uh, the body of the anvil. Um, we don't sandblast the, uh, the top machine surface, that'll be just polished after it's been machined. Brady, when you are, mate. 
but it just gives it a nicer finish. The paint sticks to it better. Any sand from the mould will, will be blasted off. Um, it just gives a nicer finish. All, all our big castings are usually sand blasted to get that better finish. It's a bit hard to see the uh, the anvil because somebody sandblasted the, the glass. <laughs> Justin? I mean in general, it's hard to see because there is sand flying around at 400 kilometres an hour. Here it is, it's out. Nicely blasted. Pretty quick process to sand blasting. I just gotta get all the sand off it basically. What's the next step? Uh, just give it a grind on the mainly on the horn and just get all the little divots out of it and then we give it a linish basically. And you go over the body to see you get a nice paint job on it as well. So you're just cleaning up any yeah, excess, any, any little uh, imperfections from the casting. Make sure it's a nice smooth body and just so it's not so rough. Yeah. Yeah, it's really. Any questions or anything like that, you want to find out more details about how we do processes, by all means, uh, comment to us and we'll answer as many questions as we can. Okay, well, we'll definitely comment below. Here he is, he's the fastest he's ever worked in his life. <laughs> I'm going to have a coffee that morning too, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have a little rough so you've got a pretty big grinder there, just cleaning up the side. I mean, you obviously, you probably wouldn't use such a big grinder on the smaller ones, it's just because of the size of the casting you're working with. Oh, we like to use the big grinder because it gets a lot of quick, uh, work done quicker instead of a uh, little grinder because it seems to burn out because we're pretty good on the grinder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you smash it? Yeah, we're pretty... You can all make them? Yeah, we're pretty hard on the grinder. Yeah, we're working on this grinder. It takes a man and a horse to, to use one of those. Um, it, it, well, it, it just goes through so much work so quickly. Jamie's pretty skilled on the nine inch grinder these days. Right, so we're still working on the horn here, and just cleaning out the side. He's just taken the uh, outer skin off the anvil, off, off the horn. Um, what is that skin? Is that like an oxidisation or...? It, it's a, a, a casting skin. It's actually really hard to cast in skin. Um, but for presentation and for use, um, it always wears off on use when, when people are, are using the anvil. So it's just nice to take it off and, and to give people a, a, a good product. We put a lot of work and detail into our handles. We're very proud of them. Um, there's not many people that make a, an handle of this quality. A lot of barriers like the bending bars for uh, mainly spreading horseshoes, but you can put flat bar in them and, and bend flat bar easily. Uh, we have them on both sides. Um, there's a lot of um, new ideas on my angle um, that we've developed to, to be in front of all the other competitors. All the other competitors make old fashioned angles.
Um, here's Jamie now, he's just polishing the top now. So what are you doing here, you're linishing, you switch to a five inch grinder, what's that a flat disc? Oh yeah, just a, uh, it's a linishing disc, but um, just a flapper disc really, but what we're going to do is just get rid of the machining lines and just making sure it's a nice polished edge and then we'll go over the horn as well. Beautiful. She's starting to look really nice, fellas. What a fantastic job. Look how beautiful that is starting to come up. So what's left? Coat of paint. Yeah, a bit of paint. Um, we'll finish off the, the horn. The horn's totally polished right around. Um, um, uh, I think all the burrs are off it now. So it's just basically a bit of paint. And um, What sort of paint are you guys using on it? It's a blue hematome. Um, We've tried a few different paints, but the hammer tone is the best. Ready to roll, Jamie? Hopefully. Let's do it. Um, we enjoy the color, the, the blue color. We've tried greens and light blue, but um, we like this dark blue. It seems to really set the anvil off. Um, the color's probably irrelevant to the, the quality of the anvil, but um, it, it's just something that we seem to come inside with the with the, with the machine top surface. Does that prevent rust or what do we do? Oh, this, one, this thing won't rust. This, this all, um, you can leave this, these animals outside for a long period of time and they won't rust. Um, um, so it's just more or less the, the decorative side of it. Um, we, we want to sell a quality product and we don't want to sell a half finished product. So. The way I sell ambles is to, to give the best. Over the, the 15 years I've been making these ambles, I've never had one come back or, or complain. Um, that's the amble. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we're going to do a lot more videos in the future. And don't forget, go down the bottom up and, and, and do comments. Ask us any questions you want. Um, we're happy to answer. And if you want to see something interesting, give us a yell out, go back to comments and we'll do it, we'll show you. So, um, a lot of secrets have been kept in foundries over the years. So, are you going to give us your secret recipe for the anvil? Um, maybe one day. <laughs> All it is is uh, high chrome steel, high nickel. It's not a complicated metal, it's more the heat treating, the way we heat treat them. Um, to have a hardened face and a soft bed, that's very important in an angle. That's just one little difference that we do. So, in the future, um, ask questions. We're, we're open for um, any questions you want to ask. And um, hopefully we can show you more videos. So uh, that's it, that's, that's the finished one. Um, thanks for watching, and that's bye from me and bye from James. <laughs> Thank you.